Uh, what did you get a chance to get out of the week down in Florida? There were a lot of things that come out of it. Um, two really good games, probably the pinnacle of it. Plenty of structural work, a great environment, wonderful facilities. Climate also plays into it, where you have more opportunity to, to really be a little bit more guiding and thoughtful about the work that you're doing rather than sometimes out in the freezing cold and pouring rain in Nashville. Um, it, it's just a wonderful environment down there. There's, uh, there's the work that goes on on the field and then there's the, there's the team building and the spirit that your hopes being formed, living in the same accommodation, which is, uh, which is very, very nice down there. So yeah, it was, it, it's a terrific week. Um, and uh, I think at this time of the year, it fits in great with the way that the conditions can be sometimes in Nashville. Uh, we didn't get to see it because it didn't stream. So who are some of the guys that maybe people didn't expect to do well that you thought did well, or maybe just some of the guys who really stood out over the course of the two uh, friendly? I think all, all of the new guys have fitted in great. Um, at, at this stage of preseason, you tend to find that uh, individuals' consistency and form is what they're searching for and we've got a month left of, of our build-up so I suspect that there'll be a lot of players that have shown some encouraging signs and some uh, some individual quality but finding it regularly and uh, you know getting to that point where maybe we've seen them before and expect them to be is, uh, is part and parcel of, of the time frame we're in. I, I mean, I genuinely thought that Alan had a, a very decent couple of periods. You have to bear in mind that these guys are, are working from sort of 45 minutes to an hour, maybe slightly longer. So it's not a full 90 minutes at the moment. Some of them are coming off the line as well, which is not always ideal to get into a game. Um, but uh, lovely to see Cameron out there. Um, 30 minutes in the last game, um, we've uh, I think we've we've seen some of the qualities that Colton Belmar has. Um, you know his athleticism and pace. Whilst he didn't actually get on the score sheet himself, he made two or three really good moments when he went up front against Montreal, and was a big part of the goal, the first goal against Louisville. Did ever so well as he came inside hit the target with a great strike and you know from there on out Alan and Tucker did the rest. Um, yeah, I, I, I genuinely think that everyone has shown something but certainly not to the level or the consistency as as we might have seen in the season last year. Uh, you mentioned just a little bit of Cameron down there in Florida. Didn't see Daniel in either of the games. Are you just saving those guys for when people can see him, national fans? No, they've, they've both been carrying little um, little injuries. No, nothing crazy. Um, Daniel, I think, had uh, a bit of a, a, a real downtime in the off-season. He had an injury towards the end of last year, and I think he, he wanted to make sure that everything was, was in the right place health-wise. That meant that he was a little bit behind the vast majority of the group athletically. And when he joined in, he got sore quickly, which is normal when you've not done a bundle. And to then try and force him into games, having not got the right physical base, is, is always a little bit concerning because you can pick up something a bit more substantial. Cameron's had a tight quad. Um, He's jumped in and out of work and he's looked great when he's been in it, but he's just had a little bit of a problem there. He's played on his mind a little bit, so just wanted to be ultra cautious. Oh, you had a trialist who played pretty significantly in both games of any Vermeer. What did you see out of him, and is he a guy that could find a place on this team down the road? He is. Um, uh, Vinny is uh, he's a very good technician. He looks like he's been schooled ever so well. Um, real bright and intelligent football mind and, and he brings with him some uh, some very good education from 
the, the Dutch league. Um, he offers us something that's a slightly different dimension in that central midfield area. And he's, and he's of a really good age. He's 22, he's still learning the game. He's got plenty of uh, future in front of him. Um, there is a possibility that he could be part of the group, but we'll see how things evolve. Of course, the games down at IMG were the very best time to see what he was about in some competitive games. And uh, he's not only made a good impression on the field, but I think you'll find when you speak to the guys, he's fitted in terrifically, great personality and a, a real genuine individual. You had a couple guys who played slightly different positions than we saw last year. Rapapa played a bit on the wing last year, but it seemed like he was primarily there at IMG. Uh, Ramon also got out on the wing, it looked like, from the very brief clips we were able to see. Uh, what did you see out of those guys in, in wide positions that are maybe a little bit different than what we've traditionally seen? Well, yeah, Rapapa did finish the season mm -hmm. out wide. I, mm -hmm. I actually think he played some of his, his best soccer out there. Um, with him and Allen on the flanks towards the end of the season, it gave us a different dimension, both pacey, sharp, forward-thinking players, of course very different physically, but they both offered us a, a dimension that is and can be very difficult to deal with in a game. Um, you know, I see Rapapa's future in that position. Um, he'll be competing out in those wide areas with Allen, um, with Colton, um, and Ramon, as you said, at the moment, he's not in the right place athletically, which means again that there's a bit more work to be done behind the scenes before we see the best of him again. Um, Ramon's slightly different. I think he's a little bit more adaptable. He's very comfortable in that 10 attacking midfield role. Um, but at the moment, he's gonna see his best opportunity, I believe, in those wide areas. And again, somebody who can take players on, he's got a turn of pace, he's more than comfortable in possession, he's creative and he's bright, and they're all the qualities that we're after. So, you know, pre-season's all about those guys that hit the ground running and show consistency and form, as I've just said, as quickly as possible. And those guys will start the season. The ones that take a bit longer to get into their stride, um, who, who, are, who are shown showing erratic form uh, are probably going to be the ones that are going to have to wait their chance. Well, how did Matt Lagrassa perform in Florida? Uh, I, I mean, Matt's one of those guys that are coming in good shape. Uh, he looks after himself. Uh, he played as a as a ten against Louisville in the period that he played, which we've seen him play um, not not overly consistently. Uh, last year, but certainly at important times. Um, there was a reason for that, but I, I, I felt as though the game warranted an individual in that position that we may well see as the season unfolds. But he's looked bright, he's, he's looked in a good place, and uh, like many of the guys, he's, he wants to be in that starting lineup come the start of the season. Seemed like your top two keepers each played a half uh, in each of the games. Again, we only saw a few clips, but both of them made some pretty big saves. What did you see out of them? I'm, I'm very blessed with two excellent goalkeepers. Um, Matt looks like he's, uh, he's, he's continued where he left off last year. Uh, in both games, he's made a couple of very important saves um, and looked, as I would imagine, and I've seen Matt an awful lot in these pre-season build-ups, he looks in exactly the right place and building towards the start of the season. For Connor, slightly different. I don't know um, and haven't seen him every day, of course, um, but he's made a great impression. Uh, I did think that uh, the goals against uh, in the Montreal game maybe didn't reflect, uh, you know, especially uh, for him brilliantly uh, and I don't mean that in terms he made mistakes but I'm sure he would have been a little bit down about conceding two goals so therefore delighted that he kept a clean sheet against Louisville under some pressure late on uh, and against what will be you know, a strong opponent and one of our if not our main rival so uh, I I'm delighted with a pair of them it's going to be a, a good battle and challenge throughout the season for the 
for the two goalkeepers. Obviously you can tell by the number of individuals that I asked about, you guys did a lot of wholesale changes. Is that the philosophy that you're going to use potentially this weekend as well, to see as many of the guys as possible over the course of the game? Yeah, these, these early games, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think the guys are ready for 90 minutes. It's the, it's the case for most teams, they'll utilise the early few games to make sure everyone's getting a, a, a good sight of the field, an opportunity to show what they're about, where they're at. Um, I, I would suspect as we move down towards the uh, New York and uh, the, the Indianapolis game that we're starting to see a little bit more of the guys that have pushed themselves in front. They might play a few more minutes um, and certainly edge towards what would constitute what they're going to see the first game of the season.